Hi, William Sheriff here. I'm chairman of Nuclear Fuels, and I'm joined today by Mike Collins, our CEO. We are uh, dedicated to in situ exploration for uranium in the United States, primarily in Wyoming. Uh, we have a, a several properties, but our key property is the uh, KC project in uh, the western side of the Powder River Basin, a very prolific uranium producer uh, in the U.S. Okay, well, like um, Mr. Chef, um, thank you very much for um, uh, joining us yet again, and, and Mike, lovely to meet you. Um, I, I was going to say you're the new kids on the block, but you're not really. If I look at if I look at the bench strength, it's pretty strong, isn't it? Well, it is. And this company came out of uh, Encore Energy, which you and I have spoken a number of times about, going back to the days when uh, uranium was popping its head up about 30 or so, and wondering when Sue was ever going to move. But uh, we've we've come a long way since then, and uh, uh, sure enough, that was a big indicator that we were on our way. But uh, you know, Encore is dedicated just to production, and so as such, when it came across the KC project, which has exceptional uh, exploration merits, uh, we didn't simply want to bend it out to uh, you know any other company. We wanted to uh, keep our finger in it, if you will, and uh, as such, we uh, uh, came up with a creative arrangement, uh, started Nuclear Fuels, actually had a lot to do with picking the management of it and the board. Um, you know, we don't control it, but uh, we, as I said, we keep our fingers into it. And we've got a claw back on the major property, the KC, which here again, we think is the best exploration project in the U.S. by far. Fantastic. And, uh, and there's a sound that just happened, a telephone ringing, which I don't think I've heard in 20 years. Uh, so, no, fond memories. Nostalgia, um, right? It's, it's about the last time the radio money. post moved. So it's, it's all money flowing in. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> right. Right. Um, like, you kind of... Like, why, why, why do you do this, uh, Bill? Why, why, why now? Why is this the right time for a, another uranium story in the U.S.? Well, here again, it's not just another uranium story. It's, uh, you know, it shows the clear focus of both companies, if you will. And, and Encore, we aren't in the exploration business. We're in the uh, production business. We've built the elite team that uh, knows how to take these assets that are advanced and put them into production. Our first project goes into production this month at, at Encore. And, and as such, uh, we don't have the team to do a, a detailed exploration project. This project encompasses 30-some miles along trend with almost 4,000 historic drill holes. But there's a lot of work that remains to be done. And the work actually stopped shortly after Three Mile Island. Uh, it's essentially the entire western half of the Powder River Basin, and the eastern half has you know no less than about a half a dozen uh, in situ operators uh, that are on standby and have operated in the past. So you know, it couldn't be in a better place. Uh, we just aren't in the exploration game. So while we have great hopes and, and uh, reason, with good reason on this project, we don't want to staff up. We don't want to go out and raise money to explore when we're raising money to actually put into production. Um, it, it just makes a lot of sense, and, and it would fit very nicely in our pipeline of projects should we execute the, uh, the clawback uh, fitting. Uh, you know, it's located centrally between our gas hills and, and our uh, – Project Dewey Burdock in South Dakota. So it would be a, an ideal fit for Encore. Uh, this way, we've got a, a dedicated interest in it. And, and yet, uh, Encore uh, doesn't need to foot the bill for the exploration. And the shareholders uh, of nuclear fuels stand to benefit by being the only small company that actually has a, a pathway to production. And that, that via the uh, arrangement with Encore, where not only do they pay two and a half times the exploration expense, they also carry the project to production for nuclear fuels for their minority interest. And uh, that's uh, somewhat unique in the industry. It is, but I want to talk about the U.S. component here because it feels like not only is the timing right in terms of it's moving from this buyer's market to seller's market, but the whole the whole U.S. infrastructure is waking up. We see we saw the uh, White House with their, with their hands out for $2.2 billion on the enrichment side of and conversion and enrichment side of, of, of things and obviously with IRA and, and lots of other funds available for this self-sufficiency, which you guys have been calling for, how do you position yourselves? I mean, Wyoming's no stranger to ISR, but how do you position yourselves to deliver into the U.S. Uh, self-sufficiency um, that is uh, that is so um, desirous of? Well, I think you know two things to remember. Number one, in 1980, before we started outsourcing yet another industry, that being nuclear fuel, the U.S. was self-sufficient, having produced over 40 million pounds a year. And uh, then, you know, with the um, me megatons to megawatts program and, and reliant upon cheap uh, imports, uh, the U.S. pretty much had the industry go to nothing with the exception of a few years in between the last 44 years. And uh, 
you know, being in Wyoming is a key advance for us. We obviously have a couple of two or three years of intense exploration. We're, we're underway, and Mike can get you all the details on that, but we're underway drilling as we speak uh, very aggressively. And uh, we'll pick the pace up uh, even beyond that in the spring. Uh, but, you know, with a couple of years of exploration and then the uh, benefits of being in a, a, an agreement state in Wyoming uh, gives us the ability to get this thing permitted and in production in, in a reasonably short period of time. You know, potentially if all the stars lined up as, as quickly as five years, um, maybe six. But, uh, you know, you compare and contrast that to the timelines of any other project starting essentially from, from ground zero, albeit with a very healthy database and some historic resources, you know, it's unparalleled to get something off the ground that quick. And, and I think it'll be, uh, if it's right into uh, the Encore pipeline, should it develop as well in terms of our ability and capacity to move things forward as well. Right. Okay. And, and Mike, this might be a nice point for you to come in. And also, I just want to say, uh, let people know, that Bill, you you literally do have places to be in a second, so you, you may be disappearing shortly. Um, Mike, you've inherited a lot of data. Um, you've got a good team there. So when, you, when you're looking at that data, how did you decide to utilize that, interrogate, interrogate, interrogate that data set? And then what have you decided to do? Yes. Yeah, so, so thanks very much, Matthew, and I appreciate being here today as well. Um, we, yeah, we've got 3,800 uh, drill holes across 42 square miles of ground. Um, so that's actually pretty hard to grapple with in a lot of ways, but, um, and, and there, there are some key areas in which, uh, the previous operators, uh, focused on and, and started to develop resources. Uh, but as a whole, it, it, the drilling is fairly wide spaced and shallow. So, um, what we're doing is going back and. Uh, doing 3D modeling and, and doing projections of where we think um, lower roll fronts should come in underneath this shallow drilling, as well as targeting what we see as um, uh, the best grades and, and the best target areas where we think we can build resources fastest. Right. And, and, what, and what's the plan here? Because obviously you, you're, you're new, um, you, you've been lucky enough to inherit a lot of data, you've got the support of on, Encore and, and, and the team there as well, but you're going to need to raise money to deliver against a plan. So t tell us about your sort of timing of how you, well, it's a good market to raise money in for uranium, that, 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 that's for sure, but you want to be careful you know, and sort of anti diluter in a way. So what is the plan for you with regards to money and specific allocation of that capital? All right, well, <clears throat> really our focus is drilling. Drilling, drilling, and then we'll be doing more drilling. Um, we've started at the Saddle Project in uh, the southern end of, of our, our uh uh, uh, KC project area, and we actually just extended our claims to the east of Saddle, where we um, found some new data and and realized that there was even more potential for what we see as perhaps some of the highest grade material in the project as a whole. Um, <clears throat> so we're we're really focusing on uh, valuing that initial um, historic half million pounds resource. At, I think it's got about a one point uh, point one four. Uh, grade, uh, which is pretty high for in situ recovery style deposits, and then we're going to walk that out and and see if we can aggressively expand that and uh, and and bring it uh, into compliance um, as a, as a current resource, as it were. But okay, I think so we can demonstrate quickly to the public that we've got a lot of uh, potential and and ability to to move this forward. Okay, well, tell me about that. Like you, you you're. You're delivering into a very positive uh, market and very enthused market for for your uranium for for sure. Um, but you're going to have to follow s some of the old etiquette, which is you're going to have to put good news out into market. So the drilling that you're doing at the moment, what are you hoping to be able to come back and, and demonstrate, and obviously then raise money off the back of? So t t tell us about what you're aiming to try to do specifically. Yeah, so I guess specifically we've got to validate the existing historic resource. And then we've got to expand on that and demonstrate the upside by stepping out, doing um, significant step outs from the historic, a long strike of the roll fronts and, and expand those out, get more pounds in the ground. Okay. It's, 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 it's as simple as that. I'm, yeah. I might just add, Matt, this is a, such a huge district. This is the first time in the history of the district, uh, going back to 79, that the entire a system of roll fronts, which is over 110 miles of roll fronts, is actually under common ownership. In the past, there were uh, intermittent drill programs, fences that established the trends of the roll fronts without any definition drilling going into it. 
And of course, they had grandiose plans of developing the entire district and then came Three Mile Island. So that was the end of that. We're really the first ones since then to put it together. And so, uh, you know, we, we funded the company privately before doing the RTO. So we're in very good shape, have a, have a good register of uh, institutional shareholders, as well as a spattering of retail and, and high net worth individuals. So, you know, right place, right time, right team. Uh, you know, it, it really is uh, an exceptional story. And uh, that's one that uh, one of the main reasons Encore got got behind it and, and was instrumental in, in creating it. So. And then you will cut out shortly on you, so just... Yeah, and no, I, I hear you, I hear you. I, but uh, just very quickly, um, obviously, Drill, 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 it, it got that message, and it's focused. So KC is it, B- B- Bethel, Lisbon Valley, Moonshine, they take a back seat for now. It's about getting the, the half million pounds validated. So well, that- and we need uh, we need 15 million to uh, get Encore's attention, or 10 at the right grade. And, you know, given that number of uh, miles of roll front, it's certainly a, a, an attractive... Uh, target that we're highly optimistic on. Just a lot of drilling. A lot of drilling. And Mike, when, when can we expect to start seeing um, some numbers and, and uh, press releases coming from you? We should be seeing results there very shortly, uh, results shortly, because we are using gamma probe um, inferred um, assay technique as opposed to chemical assays. So our turnaround time is is sort of days as opposed to months and months and months. Okay. Well, like, I appreciate you guys coming on and actually sharing the story. Um, experience team, uh, ISR in Wyoming. Uh, what gets better than that? Uh, we'll see you soon. Stay in touch and thanks for coming on. Thanks so much, Matt. Thanks, Matthew.